Okay, chapter six is about area and volume. It's a very practical uh, subject. Uh, I think most people have no problem seeing where this is going to be applicable in the real world. Um, that's true actually of most of geometry, but sometimes it's not quite so obvious as it is in this case. The central problem here is actually a little area puzzle. Uh, what we have is an 8x8 eight eight square which looks like we can uh, slice apart and reassemble the pieces like this. And if you count up the squares, it's a 5 by 13 rectangle. Now if you count the squares, 8 times 8 is 64. So there's 64 squares here. And 5 times 13 is 65. So it looks like we took 64 square units here and turned them into 65 square units. So obviously something's wrong here, and we'll um, come back to this at the end of the chapter. So if you look at this problem, one of the things you see here is we're taking a square, and we're turning it into a rectangle, and in here you have a triangle, you have two triangles and two trapezoids. And so uh, one of the things we're going to need to be able to look at this is uh, how do you find areas of all these simple shapes? I normally suggest that you use the PDF files for the central and project sections uh, like you would answer keys. But in this chapter, the PDF that goes with the central section starts with this essay on area and volume. And it's something that is uh, in addition to what's in the text. Uh, the actual answers are start down here. And so let's look at this for a minute. The way the textbook introduces area is it just gives you outright that the area of a rectangle is going to be length times width and then it builds up everything else from that. However, uh, I think it's actually important to go back a step before that and see where that length times width comes from. So what I generally do when I'm introducing area is I start with an arbitrary shape and here I have it drawn on a graph paper grid so the question is, how would we go about finding the area of this? And in order to answer that, we have to come to grips with what do we mean by area? Now, uh, if I take one of these little squares to be one unit of area, then the question is, how many of those little squares fit here? And a lot of people say, well, it's not going to fit regularly around the edges. We have to estimate. Well, let's not um, be blocked by that. Let's start off that way anyway. And notice that we can take a large section of this and, um, let's see here. And the way we would actually want to go about um, finding the area is count all these squares. Now, once you start counting, you realize that's a chore. And so here, for instance, if I look at this, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares across. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven down. So in this region, there's seven squares in one row, and then there's eleven rows. And so in this region, we know there's seventy-seven squares. And then we continue and count them here, and so forth. Now it's true that where we, when you get near the edges, you're going to have to start estimating. And there's various ways of doing that. But even if you're measuring length, and you just want to say, what's this length? You put the ruler down. And it's pretty unusual if when you just take a length and you put a ruler down that it comes out right on a mark, you're going to have to estimate at the end anyway. So here we're just estimating around the edges in a two-dimensional sense just the way you'd estimate length in a one-dimensional sense. So, the bottom line is, what do we mean by area? Is how many little unit squares it would take to cover the area, granted that we might have to estimate around the edges. So in the process of uh, doing the area we just encountered, uh, we see that in order to find the area of a rectangle, it's like saying how many unit squares are there along one edge and how many rows of squares are there and then we could just multiply. Well, I counted ahead of time and there's 21 squares across the bottom and there's 12 rows. So if I take uh, 21 times 12 
Uh, that's 42, 21, 252. So this is 252 square units is the way you would express it. Okay, once we know how to find the area of one shape, in particular we learned the rectangle is length times width, then we can go through a chain of reasoning to extend this to other shapes. And so the chain of reasoning goes, uh, first let's take a parallelogram, and notice that any time you have a parallelogram, uh, if you know the base and the height, you can convert this into a rectangle where you know the width and the length. So the length here is the same as the base of the parallelogram. The width of the rectangle is the same as the perpendicular height of the parallelogram. And so there we have uh, the answer for parallelograms. Going through this same process, we can split parallelograms and come up with areas for triangles. And so you can come up with a formula for the area of a triangle based on this. And then we can go on to trapezoids. So a trapezoid is a figure where there's two parallel sides, and you can um, have these two bases be different. But this is the height, and here's the two bases. But we can turn a trapezoid into something we already know how to compute. Here I've turned it into a triangle. Here I've turned it into a rectangle. So the sequence we have is rectangle, parallelogram, triangle, and trapezoid. And those are going to be the basic shapes that will uh, help us find areas of all kinds of things. So that pretty well covers it for area, for now at least. Going on to volume, we're going to start with um, the volume of a rectangular, kind of a solid like this. So if I think of a, um, a rectangular uh, front surface and a rectangular base, and let's uh, put dotted lines here. Okay, how would you come up with the volume of a rectangular solid? Well, just like you needed, you need little units of length to measure uh, overall length. So if we say here's an inch, how many inches long is this? You're going to compare a length to a length. And for an area, you're going to compare a little unit of area to the overall region to say what is the area of this. So to find the volume of something, what you need is to start with a unit of volume. And so if you have, if you're using inches for length and square inches for area, here we have cubic inches for volume. So think of little cubes. And you can see that just like we saw, uh, we had to count how many squares line up along one edge and then how many rows. Here it's like saying, how many cubes can you pack into this box? And so how many would fit along one edge? And then how many rows of that would cover the floor? And then how many layers of that would fill up the whole box? So just like you took length times width for the area of a rectangle, we have length times width times height to find the volume of a, a box-like figure. That box-like shape that we started with is just a special case of what, in general, we call a prism. A prism is where you have a polygon as the base, and then you have parallel lines coming up from that. And you have a congruent polygon forming the top base here. So here you have two congruent polygons, and they're separated by parallel lines in this entire volume in here would be called your prism. So in the case of a rectangular prism, which would be our box, we found the area of the floor, that was our length times our width, and we multiplied by the height. And so in general, however uh, the prism is shaped in terms of the bases, we simply take the area of the base times the height. I'm actually going through a little summary of the results of this chapter, but if you go through it, It'll show you uh, the derivations of these things and lots of practice uh, in applying these. There's one other um, uh, shape that we're going to cover, which is related to the prism. So instead of starting with a polygon and taking parallel lines straight up to get a prism, what if we start with the same polygon except come to a point at the top? And so we have a 
I'll shape the tapers down to a point like this. This is called a prism. This is called a pyramid. Now the pyramids in Egypt have a square base and they come to a point. But you can have pyramids with any kind of polygon on the base and it can come to a point. So uh, prisms in general are the area of the base times the height. We can show, and we will show in this chapter, that the volume of any pyramid is one-third of the volume of the corresponding prism. Okay, this is another chapter that has an extension section on it. And the reason is uh, this uh, textbook, in trying to stay concise, uh, didn't go to the extent of finding surface areas on solids. But that's a topic that uh, a lot of standardized tests actually cover. So I think it's probably important uh, to do that. The bottom line is the surface area of a three-dimensional figure is the sum of the areas of all the faces. And so here we have four rectangles around the side, and then we have this uh, rectangle top and bottom. And so we would just one by one go through and find them and add them up. Uh, sometimes you can come up with uh, simpler ways to express this. Think of taking this as a box and folding it out um, uh, like this, for instance. Okay, so there's going to be a variety of ways of approaching this, but bottom line is surface areas are just as important in some circumstances as finding the volumes. Uh, this is going to be a three and a half week chapter, take two and a half weeks for the main section and another week on the extension, and there you have it.